carry on. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the regular meeting of council for Monday, uh, January the 12th, called to order at slightly after seven. Uh, looking for approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, public participation time. This is the opportunity for public to uh, speak and, and say their piece. Um, just curious though, full house folks, how many of you are here for anything other than Ocean Grove? <laughs> having said that, see, we're good. We got right to the point. Um, having said that, we went through a fairly lengthy public participation and allowed for those that were here the last meeting to speak and, and say their piece. Um, that has all been recorded and, and uh, we've, council has been made very aware of that. So I would ask, it's, it's great that you're here to show your, your presence, um, but I would like to at least make sure that if there's new points of information or new speakers coming forward that they are the ones to do so first. Um, and then if you have a real burning desire uh, to add, as, as long as it's new information, folks, um, at this time, we'll open it up for public participation. So um, there are some more seats over on the far side. We'll just give it a second here for these folks to get uh, seated. And for the benefit of our recorders, um, if you would please state your name and your address. Uh, if you don't like to do that because we are webcast, then you can provide that to our recorder at, at, before the meeting's out. Thank you. Go ahead. Excuse me, Madam Mayor. I have to excuse myself for conflict of interest because I live at Ocean Grove. Thank you. And now we'll have to go. Mayor and Council, um, I addressed you on December 11th and I gave the full written report about obviously the, the proposals of planning to, to Ocean Grove. Uh, subsequent to that then, um, as everything has been um, submitted by me before, what we have done is submitted a, a proposal, a petition has been put forward by all the Ocean Groves, which, um, and of course it goes back to the same part that all the roads and infrastructure should not be borne by the Ocean Grove. So this petition has been initiated and signed by 108 owners and residents, which puts forward a collective voices in stating that these costs should be borne by all Colwood taxpayers and not solely by Ocean Grove owners. Uh, the petition states, we, the undersigned, concerned Colwood citizens and property owners in Ocean Grove who urge our civic leaders to rule that the upkeep and repair of the stated areas to the through roads their infrastructure, the riparian zones and trails which transit Ocean Grove be borne by all Colwood taxpayers, of which we are all a part, and not solely by those owning property within Ocean Grove. This has been submitted by myself, Bruce Tate, on behalf of, uh, and this is the signed petition of, of the Thank you, and if you agree. That's great. Thank you. Next. Bruce Morrison, 3373 Billhurst. Uh, good evening. Uh, to introduce myself, I'm a taxpayer in the city of Colwood, and as such, I'm very interested in the proper development of our community. Now, regarding my interest in Ocean Grove uh, applications and variants, I am also a parent of one of the residents who will be affected by the inclusion or lack thereof of the off-site improvements of Seafield Road uh, and he could not be here tonight, so I'm here in his place, basically. A devel developers of Ocean Grove made a comment to the city that was captured in the report to council on the 10th of December to the effect that the development would not be feasible if the revised sea field off-site improvements were made mandatory. Now, to put that into perspective, if the potential gross sales of the planned project are in excess of $1 billion, $1.5 billion perhaps, and the inclusion of $1.35 million is gonna put that in jeopardy, then, and we're talking now less than one-tenth of 1% 1 of the gross sales. 
I suggest that this developer is too marginalized to be a good risk for the city of Colwood. The city and its residents have endured enough failed projects. If the developer is not adequately funded to complete the planned project, this one could very well be another incomplete project, not in the same sense as the very visible ones, but nonetheless a real disappointment to the city and to nearby residents. I appreciate your time and thank you. Thank you, Stuart Parkinson, uh, 3230 Selick Way. Uh, this may be a little repetitive, but I do have a burning desire to say it, so I guess that gives me leeway. Um, after the last meeting, uh, as you noted, there were a lot of comments from Ocean Grove. Mostly we're concerned about uh, the downloading of the costs of riparian and trails and, and roads to, uh, to our, ourselves as opposed to uh, other projects in town. And, and I, my concern is that uh, I don't see it addressed here on the agenda. There were other, I other items that night that came up that have been addressed by reports. And I want to I want to make sure that, uh, that that council understands our position that that this isn't something that's re related to the development or the rezoning or anything like that. This is a this is an issue that we would like council to address, to discuss, and to make a decision on, independent of whether they decide to proceed with the rezoning or not. We think this is a matter of principle and fairness, and frankly, we don't we think we're being hard done by, and uh, we would ask uh, your uh, uh, considered uh, uh, discussion of it and a decision to be made so that uh, we know how you stand. So I, I guess I'm. I would have liked to see a report on it on the agenda as well tonight on, on how you're going to move forward because hopefully you will agree with us and we'll decide to move forward in this way and there will be some mechanics to be worked out as it's done that will involve uh, the existing stratas and perhaps the developer and certainly yourself. So there, there's, a, there's some work to be done on it. And as I say, I, I just want to stress that it's totally independent of the actual rezoning, wh whatever you decide to do with that. Daryl Roth at 252 Seafield Road. And thanks for the opportunity. I wasn't here in December to speak at that meeting. And just in brief, I'm here to uh, basically plead to have the improvements on Seafield Road done right away instead of waiting as a developer wants for 500 units to be completed and then to do it in, at a much later phase. I believe if you uh, change the covenant that's already in place to allow that to happen, then it may never get done at all. Seafield Road, what it is right now, is only half of a road. I, I don't have storm sewers, I don't have s sewers at all, and uh, it literally is half a road, one lane, and no parking. And to tell you the truth, it, it, it's, it's such a marginalized street that the people, the strangers that come in from other places, they think that nobody lives there and they dump garbage up and down Seafield Road. But having said that, what it is right now, it is still used, believe it or not, by many people, pedestrians walking in the neighborhood, I, dozens of people every night, use it because of the beauty of the area. And my plea is, is that uh, it could become so much better if the improvements were done uh, sooner rather than later. And uh, there was the promise from a quattro to do the improvements in the next phase. That is what we have on title at this present moment. And what the developer is asking you to do, council, is to change that. You have to legally change that promise that was given to fulfill a 45 year promise to make Seafield a regular normal road and and now the developer is asking you to postpone that yet again and I think that's just too much to ask for the residents thank you very much Any others in the audience? We have about five minutes more that we can give to this if there's anybody that has anything. Yes, good evening. My name is Lou McCloskey, 3223 Selick Way. Um, I was here uh, in December as well, so I won't delay the point. 
It's just a point of view that's uh, an option to consider. In other municipalities, they've considered riparian areas to be included as a park. And I was wondering if that was considered whatsoever with regards to this review of this proposal. Insofar that uh, one third of the property uh, has already been designated as part the lower portion that is connected to the lagoon. Uh, given that the uh, trail system is, a, in, in our view, a public uh, trailway system that connects the community uh, and the repairing area, I think that this area could be uh, considered a park and can be considered a park which could be undertaken by the city of Toronto. Thank you for your time. Any others? Uh, my name is Bob McCann. I have lived in this area since the 23rd of December this year. Uh, obviously, I am not young, and the notion that uh, the local residents here are going to have to pay for everything uh, calls me. My pension won't have any handle that amount of money. Uh, so I would ask that you would consider putting whatever improvement you're talking about as a part of the city. Thank you. Anyone else looking to make a comment to council? Last and final chance. Good evening. My name is Chris Tate. I live at 3234 Holgate Lane. I'm one of the um, people here representing our, our uh, need to be heard. Um, the thing that I would like to know is the proposal that is being uh, given to Council about uh, our carrying the costs. Is this the first time this has happened in Colwood? Are there other areas where through roads are being supported financially by a community local to that area and parkland areas are being covered for the costs by people in that area. I, I put it to you to perhaps um, let us know if this is a test case on your part or if there is a precedent. Thank you. And seeing no one else 
jumping up. We shall continue with the meeting and move on, uh, folks, to Mayor's message. Not sure if he's going to get Councillor Trace. Yes. Yes. Good. Thank you. Um, just an opportunity for a few announcements. Uh, one coming in that the 2015 Age Friendly Community Planning and Projects grant approval has come in for the um, Seniors Housing and Support Initiative. It is a $14,000 grant that is through West Shore Parks and Rec. So that monies will be contributed to the programming and, and uh, work that they have in advance or in moving seniors and uh, that sort of thing along. Uh, another one is a media release from the last chance to access solar coal wood hot water systems. Uh, the CRD has taken over that project for the last uh, approximate year and it is running to an end this spring. So uh, if you have any need for solar hot water, you can contact the program through solarcoalwood.ca or through the CRD. Um, we also have a Handbags for Hope. It's its fifth year. It is a fundraiser um, for, let me define it, struggling with the diagnosis of neuroblastoma research. Um, so we are a collection point for that. So ladies, if you have guys too, I suppose. Um, but <laughs> I know, Rob, just clean out your closet, will you? Um, if anybody has gently used handbags that they don't mind parting with, we will be collecting them here. Um, one of our staff members is in charge of, of uh, making that collection and ensuring that they get to the, to the uh, resource. There will be an auction held at the Empress Hotel. Um, they're always very successful in, in the auction. I'm not sure... If it says, no, it doesn't say, I think last year they raised over 43,000 um, and with their overall fundraising was 250,000 towards the, the support of research on that disease. So we're happy to expand that um, as well. So with that, if no other members of council have anything from their particular areas, we're all good. Happy New Year and we're here. Um, adoption of the minutes then, adoption of 4.1.1, regular meeting of council, December the 15th. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Receipt of cycling advisory committee, November 3rd. Move receipt. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, correspondence requiring council direction. I have nothing in this agenda on that, which moves us to new business, planning and land use committee, memorandum planning department, additional information regarding historical security deposits associated with rezoning application, uh, Ocean Grove, item 6.1.1. Staff? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, I have to excuse myself once again. You shall be excusing yourself uh, for... Items 6.1.1, 6.1.2, 6.1.3, and we'll call you when we get to finance. <coughs> Thank you, Your Worship. At their regular meeting held on December 15th, 2014, Council made the following resolution. That rezoning number RZ-14-003, also known as the Ocean Grove Development Rezoning, that outstanding items from the Planning and Land Use Committee and Council and revised staff recommendations be tabled until such time that staff provides information to Council concerning what, if any, security deposits associated with the previous Aquatro development are currently held by the City. So we've brought that uh, item back with the following information. If uh, Council has some additional questions on details, please feel free to uh, ask uh, staff tonight. And also, please keep in mind um, that if there is additional information that Council would like to see on this, this issue or other issues pertaining to Ocean Grove, that they staff can take direction to provide that information prior to the public hearing. So prior to the construction of any units in the old Quattro development, the previous developer undertook roadworks on, on a portion of Lagoon Road 
the cost for which approximated or exceeded the total security deposit for the 88 units built. Therefore, the security deposit was collected but later released for the 88 units built to date. As a result, the city currently does not hold any residual securities from the previous developer. Currently, the only security deposit with the Ocean, associated with the Ocean Grove development in the city's possession is in the amount of $250,000, which is a security from the new developer's Sea Cliff properties for works within the riparian area. This replaces a previous security given by the previous developer for the same amount and for the same purpose. Please note that the recommendation in this memo to receive it references it being dated January 7th, 2015. The recommendation should be corrected to refer to it being dated January 8th, 2015. Thank you. Open to council questions. Uh, no, hold on. Uh, Councillor Nault. I'd like to thank staff for uh, responding to this in uh, more thorough detail than was in the original memo. Uh, I'm happy with uh, the response and there was only one further question is the original $250,000 for the riparian area has been replaced by the current developer. Uh, is that contingent on this development uh, being approved as before council right now? No. Anyone else? Uh, Councillor Day. Thank you. Just, um, it's unfortunate that our technology has let us down tonight because when we're handed out information, it would be nice if we could share it um, with our audience as well so they'd know what we're looking at. Um, what I'm looking at is a summary of the security deposits and fees that have been paid uh, for a quattro. And um, following along, there's an amount for the riparian area listed at $250,000. Below that, there's a $500,000. Could someone explain that to me? Uh, that was a deposit by the developer uh, because they had a a duty to build the community building, and that deposit was released after they completed the community building. Okay, that's why it says work completed, okay. So just, uh, if I can carry on, looking at the servicing agreements column, um, which was the $7,000 per unit, it looks like there was amounts um, of varying amounts, $154,000, $210,000, and lastly, uh, an entry for $42,000. And those have all uh, been released back to the developer because the work has been completed. Uh, so does that leave the only thing still in hand that for the riparian areas? That's right, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Move to receive. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Um, next item then is 6.1.2, Memorandum Planning Department, Ocean Grove, changes to off-site improvements and amenity charges. Staff? Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, this memo is to correct several miscalculations of the estimated cost of off-site works <coughs> associated with the 2007 a Quattro development agreement. Provided in the staff report dated December 10th, 2014 and presented to Council on December 15th, 2014. Unfortunately, staff had used the incorrect historical civil engineering drawings to estimate the cost of the 2007 works. Uh, we've since corrected that as stated in the memo and the net effect of the is that the additional cost compared to the 2007 uh, works and services, including Seafield Road, are revised from $623,600 to $607,500. If the recommended revisions to the Community Amenity Fund are also included, the additional cost of the developer compared to 2007 
is revised from $413,600 to $397,500. Staff recommend that this memo be received by Council for information. Thank you. Turning it to Council, any questions? Seeing none, motion to receive. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, thank you, staff, for identifying this and, and uh, bringing it out into the public. Uh, item 6.1.3, report planning department again, uh, RZ 14003, Ocean Grove, outstanding items from planning and land use committee and council revised staff recommendation. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this report was tabled at the December 15th, 2014, a regular meeting of council. Uh, for the benefit for those uh, who were not present at that meeting, I will repeat the following introduction. The application to revise the Ocean Grove Plan, formerly known as the Quattro, was presented to the Planning and Land Use Committee on October 21st, 2014, who then put forward a recommendation to proceed with the application with direction from staff to clarify several key points. The staff report before you was drafted in response to a, this request from the Planning and Land Use Committee to clarify what off-site improvements, including road upgrades and on-site parking requirements had been proposed by the developer of the Ocean Grove development. Council also subsequently directed staff to provide additional information on the proposed revised development regarding the internal riparian area, illustration of several of the subdivision lots, and emergency vehicle access for firefighting which is all provided in the staff report. As for parking, the applicant has now agreed to meet current bylaw standards for off-site parking. Staff had always understood that the application would include the works and services on Seafield Road. However, it became apparent that this was not the intention of the developer. Staff and the developer renegotiated the package of off-site upgrades and amenity contributions to include upgrades to Seafield Road. However, this meant proposed upgrades in other areas and per unit amenity contributions were reduced to partially offset the added costs of upgrading Seafield Road. Staff estimate that the revised package represents a net increase of approximately $397,500 above what the applicant had expected to contribute when the misunderstanding was discovered at the October 21st, 2014 Planning and Land Use Committee meeting. Based on what the applicant has stated is economically feasible, staff feel that these contributions adequately balance the infrastructure needs of the community and the financial needs of the developer. That being said, it is of course council's decision as to whether these revised offsite upgrades and amended contributions are acceptable. Please refer to the amended recommendation and appendix showing track changes to see how the renegotiated offsite upgrades and amenities would be would be handled in the proposed zoning and development agreement. Tonight, Council has the option to forward these applications by endorsing an re amended recommendation from the Planning and Land Use Committee and instructing staff to draft a rezoning and a fishing plan amendment bylaws prior to their consideration for first reading by Council at a future date. Alternatively, Council may defer the applications for additional information or refer the application back to Committee for their consideration. An option not expressly stated in the report would involve direction to staff to revisit some of the proposed offsite contributions and or their timing with the developer and that staff prepa also prepare the bylaws. In conclusion, staff puts forward the following recommendation. That a fishing community plan and zoning amendment bylaws be prepared such that if and when the provisions are made in a registrable development agreement for the conditions stated on pages six through nine of the staff report, Consideration will be given to the adoption of the amended bylaws. Oh, excuse me, the amendment bylaws. Thank you. Open to council for, for comment, question. Councilor Nolt. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I want to make it very clear that I will not support this amendment to the OCP or the uh, development bylaws on the following reasons. O residents have made it very clear that the roads are expected to be city roads and not strata. I agree in principle 
but the illustrated roadworks would be of little use to anybody except the Ocean Grove residents. The new plan will concentrate most of the traffic from Ocean Grove and all of the traffic from existing homes as well as any future development in the area onto Heather Bell Road and its intersection with Lagoon Road. It will also leave no possibility for any improvement to the road system after this is completed. I find this completely unacceptable. I would like to see the roads return to the configuration in the original Aquatrol plan and to be city roads and built to city standards. The city would then assume them as city roads and maintain them as any other road in Colwood. I agree that taxing the people for a service they will not be receiving is totally unfair. I also believe that the roads should service all of Colwood and not just Ocean Grove. The through extra through route, if it's not built now, will never be built unless we put it through the city park or through the and land, both of which I find to be very unlikely. While I'm happy to see some commercial space proposed, I'm not happy with the increased number of houses proposed. Colwood granted a much higher density in the rezoning of this property originally from 340 to 585 units. That's 170% of what would have originally been allowed. For this increase, the city received a new waterfront park and a long list of infrastructure improvements to be paid for by the developer. The proposal before us is for an additional 210 units, making the final 230% of the original zoning. The developer proposes, proposes far fewer infrastructure improvements and a road system I deem totally inadequate to service for future needs of the area. The riper riparian area is another issue. Uh, residents have made it clear that they consider it a city park and believe the city should accept maintenance and control of it. Uh, quite clearly, when this uh, original project came before Council, the riparian area was designed to handle excess groundwater that would be generated by putting large buildings in the area. As such, it is a drainage project for the development and not originally designed to be a city park. If the developer would choose to build this and then dedicate it to the city as a park, I would be happy for the city to take on maintenance and control of it. As it is now, it's private property owned by the development developer now and or the strata when the pro project is finished. I will not have, I will not support the city maintaining private landscaping. I too am not happy with the proposed timing for the infrastructure improvements. This site has already demonstrated that financial circumstances can change rapidly, leaving new owners and the city with unfinished infrastructure and ongoing maintenance costs. If the city approves these timelines, I would like to see the developer providing security deposits with the city that are irrevocable. The existing land title allows payment by check or line of credit, both of which are valueless in the case of insolvency of the developer. Again, I find that unacceptable. To summarize, I will not be supporting this proposal going to OCP amendment and zoning bylaw amendment in its current form. I would recommend that Council refer this back to planning and zoning for a complete rethink, designing the roads as city roads, and returning to Council when such modifications have been made. I won't make that motion now because I would like to hear the rest of Council speak. Any other members? Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to hear things that you favor and disfavor, so if I would mind asking you to keep your applause quiet. I appreciate your support, but um, that would mean I'd also have to give in to booze, and I don't like that at all. So um, just let's be respectful. Um, anybody else at Council? Thank you. Uh, I'm actually am supportive of the project. Uh, I will be making some amendments uh, to it uh, this evening, uh, and I'll just go through the uh, the, the things that I think, uh, or at least how I feel about it. 
Uh, I have struggled with the strata versus public road, uh, and uh, I've had conversations with staff for several hours actually trying to understand the concept of what a strata road is and what a public road is, and our, our people in Ocean Grove, for example, being double taxed if, if they're being responsible for their own road and, and the costs and benefits and, and so on. It basically works out to, it costs the city uh, over the lifetime of the road, uh, I've been informed, about $10,000 a year, uh, but I still think from a fairness standpoint it should be a public road. Uh, so I will be making a recommendation tonight that, uh, that it is not a strata road but a, a public road and, uh, and that, the, uh, th that the project should proceed uh, with, with that concept. Um, dealing with the improvement on Seafield, the Seafield issue uh, is, again, once, once the improvement's made on Seafield, then it becomes the city's responsibility. And my concern is you improve everything now you, then you have a whole bunch of construction trucks, everybody coming down, doing all the work, the road gets torn up, and then all the taxpayers are having to pay to get it fixed after the units are built. So from my standpoint, it makes a lot more sense to actually wait until you have the units built out to a certain level, and then you repair the road, and, and you get a well-functioning road. So I am actually supportive of, of waiting uh, and having that improvement on Seafield occur once we have a certain amount of construction actually built out. Uh, the riparian, uh, that's, uh, it, it's a struggle because it is on private land uh, right now. It is not a public land. It's not the public's responsibility to take care of something that's on private land. Uh, and right now, the initial development with uh, Aquatro was that it was put in with the understanding that it was going to be on private land. Um, so at this point, uh, I feel as though the city's hands are tied when it comes to who's responsible for that because the city can't take on responsibilities for, for areas that are on public. So I will actually, or excuse me, on private, so I will actually be supportive of the riparian uh, cost being borne by the stratus, uh, but I will be uh, supportive of, of them turning into a public road. Uh, and then I'm also, the other concern that I will look to staff and ask about is the re, uh, on uh, what I've read so far regarding Heather Bell, that the developer will be building a temporary sidewalk, um, but there's never a definition of when that sidewalk actually becomes permanent. And uh, that, that I would like to ensure that that actually occurs at some point within the, uh, the development. And I am done, thank you. Kay. And you're allowed to boo me, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else, Councillor Logan? And then Councillor Dave? Thank you, Worship. Um, you know, it's tough for those of us that uh, were around when we considered the Aquatro uh, project, and uh, we tend to compare this project to, to that project, which I think in some respects it's a little unfair. Two different projects, two different times, two different economic uh, sets of circumstances. Um, and uh, looking back at uh, what the city has already achieved, which is the significant uh, protection of, of our waterfront, which is a massive benefit and some infrastructure improvements already. Uh, and then for me is looking, um, keeping the eye on the prize, which is um, having that area built out. And I think, I think it's a win-win. It's a, it's a neighborhood that will be complete instead of uh, an area that's, that's full of broom um, and, uh, and, and other issues as a result of um, some areas that have not been kept up. So I think that in itself, having that developed, um, uh, will be a benefit to the area and certainly to, to the taxpayer as a whole. Um, I, uh, I totally agree uh, with regards to the comments to the, uh, to the roads. I think they should be public roads and that was something that I pushed for in the original development um, for many of the re same reasons that were stated earlier. Um, you get a consistent level of service, uh, the city has some control over the roads, and from a taxpayer's point of view, I mean, it, uh, it, uh, everybody should be treated equally. And the, the, the other uh, compelling argument to me was that there is a, a commercial component which will draw some more of the public into the area, as well as um, um, being central to the park and encouraging more of the public to, uh, into the neighborhood to utilize the park. So from that perspective, um, I too will be looking at um, some improvements to, or getting rid of that language rather, 
um, that says the the road is um, is strata. Um, yeah, the rep I struggle too, as uh, Councillor Martin does on the riparian area. You know, quite frankly, I'm not sure that it, it, it's a large ticket item um, compared to to the roads. I think the road is is the big one for me. Um, certainly, um, as was stated earlier, uh, having the riparian area as uh, as private and strata was a was a condition before to deal with um, certain issues as a result of uh, the construction of. Um, of units in the area so um, from that perspective I will be supporting the development with the um, changes to the wording for the roads and look forward to um, uh, some discussion regarding the Seafield um, issues thanks Councillor Dave. thank you um, first of all a, a question uh, on the report, um, in the portion of the report that talks about on-site works, uh, there are A, B, C, and D for conditions. And A says that road, sidewalk, drainage, sanitary sewer, water, street lighting, and related ancillary works to be phased with building permits and completed prior to occupancy of building under the applicable building permit or prior to sale of subdivided lot. And that's the part that had me confused as I was reading this today, uh, because I wondered um, whether or not this developer is able to sell off portions of the site um, for someone else to actually complete the development. Through the chair, uh, I believe that wording, and uh, I'll call upon the uh, city engineer to correct me if I'm wrong, um, was intended to um, address the fact that the revised plan has some single family housing that would take the form of, of subdivided lots and did not mean to infer that there would be um, pieces of the development uh, carved off, which uh, uh, the Seafield properties has not at any point uh, stated is their intention. Um, so then, uh, the other, uh, I guess, big topic uh, of conversation uh, is about about the roadways and whether or not uh, they would be strata or public roads. And I guess for me, there there are a number of uh, strata roads in Colwood, and I have certainly seen many applications come forward um, where strata roads have have been the result and for the most part um, those strata roads have been roads that perform um, pretty much as driveways um, you know but shared by the people who who use them um, so from my point of view it makes sense uh, if these roadways are in the current configuration uh, that is in the proposal as we've seen it uh, thus far with this developer, uh, it does make sense that those roads would be strata roads because they're not designed uh, for through traffic from other uh, parts of, of the community. Very, very little um, servicing is, is actually going to be done uh, through the roadways as they're currently designed. Um, I can think of Ponside Terrace as a strata road, Claudette Court as a strata road. Um, and they b were all negotiated by developers um, who felt that they uh, could best service the subdivision they were creating uh, with the roadway configuration um, that met their own standards and not necessarily those of the through roads in the city. Um, the other issue is around uh, parks uh, or green space and whether or not that's private or uh, belongs to the city of Colwood. And there are a number of very important greenways in Colwood that are privately owned, uh, many of which are privately uh, maintained. I'm thinking of the um, pond uh, at the corner of Fulton and I'm trying to remember the name of the other road there, um, but it's uh, not far from Claudette Court as well. 
uh, and their, the development um, has taken place to manage uh, the water quality in that area as well and continues to be maintained um, by the property um, on which it sits. Uh, there are many privately owned creeks and streams uh, that um, are maintained um, in accordance with provincial legislations. Um, and it really is a matter of whether or not, um, you know, they can become parks depends on, on what their usability is because parks, I mean, parks are for many things, but they're not, um, they're not always conducive when you have buildings right next to them. Um, the pond by Pondside Terrace would be a, an example uh, where the, the homes are so very close to the pond that it makes it, you feel like you're in someone's backyard if you go into that park. Uh, so I think that's an important uh, consideration when we talk about what should be park in Colwood. And also there may be other um, factors like uh, the drainage uh, for the properties and um, even uh, some geothermal um, functioning items that need to be maintained. <clears throat> In regard to the Seafield Road improvements, um, the one thing that Langford has done very well in their developments in building out roadways is to do half, um, develop the full width of the road, but um, leave the final paving uh, until after all the build out is done so that uh, the roads aren't necessarily, um, they're usable, but they're not at their best until further on in the process. Uh, and I just wanted to touch on the timing of the amenities, um, which uh, it took me a while to sort out. I ended up highlighting things in different colors to understand when things would be done. Um, and in my package, um, the first things that are going to be done, uh, which is in the um, uh, first 12 months, is that a temporary sidewalk will be provided on Heather Bell which is a paved sidewalk, uh, concrete sidewalk uh, to a value of about $10,000 is being put on um, a chosen road. And um, they are going to redesign the intersection of the chosen road to include um, a left turn lane and uh, to provide for the future needs for a traffic signal at some point in time in the future. So the layout will be such that it could accommodate a signal in the future. Um, so that's not very much that's going to happen in the first 12 months. And then uh, the very next thing that happens, happens, get my notes to get out of my way here, um, is that, uh, um, sorry, it was Seafield Road after 200 units um, have been sold. Uh, um, that was going to be done. And then um, after 240 units had been completed, the signalization would occur at Machosen Road. And then after 350 dwelling units, uh, they would reconstruct Goldfinch Road. Uh, they would do upgrades on Lagoon Road. They would put in the flashing amber pedestrian signals. And... Um, upgrade the transit stop. Um, and that's a fair long while to wait for any of those things to happen. Uh, so my question, I guess, to staff is, uh, is there any um, assurity uh, in the form of a bond or a deposit uh, for those works? Uh, there isn't until the work is required. And then sometimes they'll provide a bond uh, rather than do the work immediately, depending on whether we allow that at the time. The, the, the sort of guarantee, if you like, that it'll be built is only through the fact that they will want to um, recoup uh, more um, value from the project by completing it. 
uh, to the extent that that is true, that, that provides the, um, uh, the any guarantee there is that the work will be done. One way to look at that is that if they only build, you know, ten more houses, should they really be required to do all of those roads? Okay, thank you. Um, so I, I'm very aware of the fact that the neighborhood has been left in a, in a half-built condition, and I'm also aware that, that there are a number of, of promises that the original developer made um, to organize this development in such a way that the, the stratas would ta each take care of a portion of the riparian area and that that would make sense to them. And that it doesn't it ha because the, c the project hasn't completed, it doesn't necessarily leave um, the residents in that area in a better place um, to continue on as is. Uh, but at the same time, um, I'm, I'm not sure that uh, I can find any um, real good uh, justification for me to uh, vote to um, accept the proposal as, as it's been presented because we're asking for greater density. We appear to be getting less benefits for the city. And certainly if we were to consider uh, the roadways as designed uh, to be public roads, um, I think that's uh, a huge loss to the community because we won't get um, that road put in in a better way in the future. The roads will be the roads and it will be complete, um, such as it is. So uh, unfortunately, I don't feel that I can support the development uh, moving forward. Um, I wish I could find uh, some place to negotiate or to wiggle through, um, but hopefully I've, I've laid out my, my concerns and I hope that um, the development will proceed uh, in a in a better way with a better configuration in the future. Anyone else? Just before you go a second time, Jason, if you were going to go to motion. Okay, clarification. Um, two points I would like staff to clarify. Uh, Councillor Martin has pointed out that Seafield improvements shouldn't be carried out because the road will be used for construction access and probably damage the improvements. My understanding is the intent is to move the main entrance to Heatherbell Road and uh, close off the access to Seafield completely. Uh, is that correct? And what would the timing on that be? Um. In the uh, resolution as it stands, and in the current development agreement, I don't think there's any uh, timetable for removing the access onto Seafield. So right now, that would be up to the developer. Uh, there would be nothing to, because that's a public road, there'd be nothing to use him, uh, to stop him using that entrance uh, until near the end of the project. Thank you. And the second question is, I don't see road cross sections in uh, either the proposal that went to planning and zoning or in the current uh, proposal before us. Uh, are these roads, as proposed, are they going to be built to city standards or a lower standard? Uh, I s assuming we're referring to the road cross sections that are off-site? No, the road sections within the site, uh, all of the... As we're currently thinking of those uh, as strata roads, um, they haven't produced any cross sections that show it's to city standards, to my recollection. Unless the developer has a correction on that. I think it might. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? I just... <laughs> You know, it's tough when developments uh, take an awful long time to get underway and, uh, and then get stopped 
partway through and people are left with uh, lost expectations. Um, I see that their needs you know, are looked to need to be a lot of work yet to be done between the existing owners of properties built, the developer, and what might be for the future of that property in time. Um, I have some concerns that I, I mean, many of the ones that have been addressed and, and, what, and uh, already commented on, I'm not going to, to reiterate on, but some of the things that I didn't see, I um, checked on here. It says here, the developer in the off-site infrastructure upgrades says the developer will not be responsible for extending the sewer to Heather Bell Road. From where to where and who's responsible? Because if we're hooking people up within 12 months, do we have to have a plan in place on this? Page seven. Yeah, it says that the uh, developer would hook up the existing, well, would provide sewer access for the existing um, houses. That would go to Matilda. So oh. there's no On construction all the way to Heather okay. Bell from Matilda. Just wanting to sh understand where that was coming from. Um, th under that same section, uh, e, provide flashing amber pedestrian signals and associated crosswalk civil works on Lagoon at intersection of Heather Bell. Quite frankly, I don't believe that that's enough. We have residences directly across from that intersection who are already greatly impacted with the closeness pro of the proximity of their driveways and the road. It's on a curve and a hill either way coming there. And I know that there have been accidents People have hit the telephone pole that's right there at the corner, and it's a fair drop off that side uh, in there. So I'm not sure that a flashing light for pedestrians would be sufficient um, for traffic, for allowing safe egress, uh, particularly for those residences that are um, currently built and, and occupied. Um, I'm not sure if that can be part of negotiating or discussions further. Um, the other section there that was referred to in I as re redesigning the intersection of a chosen road to include a traffic signal, <coughs> pardon me, um, and left turn lane. Um, how does that whole redesign uh, factor and fit with the potential of a development where the Pilgrim Church property is? Because I understand that they've got that sort of parky part then there's the church, then there's the, the house that's there, and then behind is the um, community gardens and whatever. So I don't know if, if there's a plan coming forward yet, if we've seen anything, but I noticed that there is a for sale, or I mean a sold sign now on that property, and it may have an impact, um, or we might have a better design come out of that if we're looking at that project at the same time. Um, Aside from that, um, I think that you know we may be, for the same reasons that other council members have m mentioned already on repairing and, and roads, I'm not going to get into that and whatever, but uh, those are just my additional notes that I wanted to weigh in on. Staff? <coughs> uh, to update council on the status of the, uh, the, the former church property on Painter and Machosan Road. Uh, which also includes one of the residences adjacent to the former church property. It has been purchased by a developer who has approached us with an application for rezoning. Um, staff is currently working with that developer on um, making sure that the application meets as best it can, council's direction in the OCP vis-a-vis -vis, uh, development guidelines. Um, we are looking at the access for that uh, development and will certainly put forward any recommendations as needed to coordinate with this, these other upgrades. Uh, can I go ahead? Yep, go yeah, ahead. Uh, go so ahead. Uh, I'd just like to make a motion then, please, that staff be directed to provide further information related to and just for minutes, I'll just say E, E, which is to provide the flashing light pedestrian signal. I, uh, which is the redesigning of the intersection of a chosen road. 
and also I'm going to add Seafield improvement timelines um, and report back to Council prior to public hearing. Seconder? Second. Comments, discussion? I'm not exactly sure what the motion is. Uh, there is no motion to prepare the bylaws or any of that. I think the motion for further information, uh, the public hearing wouldn't happen until the bylaws were prepared and, and uh, uh, passed two readings, I believe. Is that correct? I, may I? Yep. I was, I was, I, I was instructed by staff, and perhaps staff can help me, that this should have been this this one should have been before we vote on if we're going to move the bylaw forward or move this uh, recommendation forward or not. Hence the reason I brought this forward first. I'm happy to bring it forward after the fact if that's a better timeline to bring it forward. Well, I, I believe the director of planning can provide better direction for the layout and the steps to take. Uh, my understanding when we were chatting though is this is if other issues were presented or discussed tonight that don't really have an impact on moving uh, the agenda items that we're talking about tonight forward, but more information is definitely wanted or required that you could ask council for a motion asking staff to do more research on that information and bring that back to council. And I know your emphasis was you wanted that information back before we would hold any kind of a public hearing. Your motion could be saying even before the bylaws are prepared, but that would be for the director of planning to address. In past practice, uh, if council wishes to proceed with the recommendation but amend it with direction to bring back further information prior to public hearing, um, it, in a sense, the, the, the direction and the recommendation to move forward with a, with a drafting of the bylaw can be combined in one resolution. Um, that's what I've seen in, in my experience. And we would not schedule the public hearing until that information was provided back to council. Uh, conceivably, um, it could happen between um, the drafting of the bylaw and second reading of the bylaw. So you're suggesting that I should withdraw? Excuse me? Are you suggesting I should withdraw that motion? Uh, well, I, th I think the motion could be um, could refer to the motion that is before council, so that um, it, we could be directed to uh, draft a bylaw, but also uh, report back to council with the clarifications or additional information that is requested. I'm still not clear. So, are you so you would like me to move the original motion? Then is that what you're saying? And then include this or? Because we have a motion on the table right now, so I'm wondering what do I do with that? It was seconded, so. Uh, I, I don't uh, believe I we do. It? I'll I just withdraw it. How's that? And then make it simple. Is that? I okay, I'll withdraw. Uh, we just, we have to vote it down and then you can. Oh, okay, we can vote it down. Reintroduce it right. or whatever. Sure. So do you want to do that? Or can we table it and bring it back? Now you're confusing me. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, it probably will come back up as a discussion after the, after the other one. After the other one, okay. Yeah. So, so wh wh which is better? There's no better, but this works. Okay. Seconder? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. So now we're on the main motion of this particular item before us for discussion. No, no, Madam Mayor, there is no motion on the table. No, we had no recommendation in there pursuant to words. So, have you guys been working on something? Oh. Well, hold on. Councilor Nault, you had made a comment. I'm trying to find. Uh, Councilor Logan's got it. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. I will move the recommendation uh, subject to um, uh, item D under on-site works that any new roads we, do, we be developed as public roads. Uh, I'm unclear whether the statutory language is still required, so I'll turn to staff uh, on that one. That's what the engineer recommended. And further, uh, that so the wording uh, that's recommended uh, for that would replace D, that's D being uh, the strata road uh, language, uh, B that any new roads will be developed. 
that any new roads will be developed as public roads, etc. I'm, I'm not sure that that's covering what our discussion was. Um, As a result of that motion, all the roads in the development would be public roads. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Right. Happy with that. Sorry. There was more. We, we're going to have to collaborate here on this one, folks. Normally, the recommendation comes in an A, B, C, D, or E kind of, of um, there, but our conversation and discussion this evening has kind of varied from that. So let's go back to what was important and... Sorry, I have no idea where you're working from as far as where the, what motion is that you're putting forward. Number six. What page are you on? Page six. Okay. Yeah, there's a recommendation right there. So it's, yeah. So we're just amending so, parts of it. Okay. So the amendment parts okay. to the recommendation that's on our sheets, which are page six, seven, eight, and nine. Um, if you can review through that, we have... And just that point of uh, clarification, Your Worship, in terms of timing of uh, Councillor Martin's uh, requests, mm -hmm. whether they would be uh, subject to uh, further information on um, pedestrian crossing, uh, intersection design, et cetera, et cetera, that Councillor Martin had raised. So that would be incorporated into that recommendation as a subject to, right, prior to public hearing? Yes. As opposed to a separate motion, I believe, which is what you were recommending. Yeah, I don't know if I'd use the word subject to. You could, um, the, this recommendation could go as amended with the additional direction to have staff report back on the items that you'd like to have revisited. At that time, the, um, uh, this could be amended such that the development agreement reflects what council decides prior to public hearing. Okay, so that, uh, Your Worship, just to be clear um, to staff, that that would be my expectation as part of the recommendation? to include those items as outlined by Councillor Martin previously. So for clarity, do we need clarity? I'm looking down here. <coughs> Councillor Logan, you've made a motion. Do we have a seconder on that? Second. Any further conversation, discussion? Councilor Nolt? Yes, I'm afraid the motion as proposed has us building city streets that don't service the city. They service only the existing uh, or the proposed development. Uh, I can't support that unless we have some sort of road connecting somewhere else on the southern end of the development, for example, across from uh, across Seafield, across the river or creek as originally proposed. Uh, the existing, the, the, the motion on the table just basically has the developer building roads that he wants that don't do anything for Colwood and that Colwood is going to pay for the maintenance and so forth. So it, it doesn't really answer my other big concern is there's no way to improve Colwood's road system after this development is approved. There is going to be one exit from that area for almost all of the traffic. I can't see anybody cutting off of Heatherbill, down the interior road, and then back out and over to Goldfinch. It just doesn't make sense that anybody would take that path. Uh, so I will not be supporting that. Uh, I would like to ask if I could make a friendly amendment in that the proposed road uh, layout be adjusted to have a road connecting the Seafield through to uh, Goldfinch Road. And I would move that as, uh, well, I if that's accepted as a friendly amendment. I'll second the amendment. Does it have to be a referendum? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, I second the amendment. Conversation on the amendment to the amended recommendation. Mr. Martin. Two things. Uh, one, uh, we have never discussed that with uh, people that live on Goldfinch, so I'd feel very uncomfortable with uh, making a decision this evening uh, without having that feedback and having them have an opportunity to speak about it as well. Uh, second thing is, uh, you know, this is where I have struggled with the idea of strata versus public. Uh, I live on Portsmouth. Portsmouth is a dead end road, uh, but it's a public road. Um, nobody uses or nobody should be using Portsmouth except people who live on Portsmouth. And the city has a lot of dead end roads. Um, and, uh, you know, the difference between, you know, if it's for one or three or five residents, I can see, but when we start talking up to 700 residents, that's a lot of call with people. Um, and so that, that's where I've had to struggle with the concept of it being a strata road versus a public road and what's, what's truly fair and what's uh, not necessarily legal, uh, you know, from a pure legal standpoint, because we could go just with a strata, but I think from a, a fairness level, uh, I, I still feel comfortable with it being a public. Anyone else? I would just point out that uh, having that road connection is consistent with the original plan um, for for the development. So I, I don't think that's a um, it's a big surprise um, for any residents that was part of the original um, Aquatro development plan. Anybody else? Call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Or I mean fails, pardon me. Um, back to the regular or the amended recommendation that's before us. Any further conversation? Uh, could you please read the uh, motion? Dr. <laughs> Logan. <laughs> it, has, it is as provided with the um, discussion items. Um, as requested for further information from staff for back onto my page. So it's as written on page six under recommendation because I had trouble following that yeah. too. Nine. Six through yeah. nine. Yeah, and with one change, which is uh, under on-site works for D, um, where it says any new roads will de be developed as, and it said strata, but we're changing that to city roads. Um, and then it goes on to the A through J uh, about when um, different roadworks will be required to be constructed. And carries on to the end of the report where it goes through energy efficiency. Plus there are some additions to that as well as yeah. outlined. Uh, by Councillor Martin. Item E with a flashing amber pedestrian. Item I redesigning the intersection of the chosen in conjunction with the development that's coming in at Pilgrim or two of the others. Yep. And, oh, and Seafield timeline that Councillor Martin was requesting. So that's what we have before us. We have a mover and a seconder called the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, retrieve our oh, missing yeah. councillor, please. Yeah, yeah, uh, moving into finance, folks, 6.2.1. Oh, uh, report I regarding AVICC, AGM, and convention, and second call for resolutions and nominations. Can you give it a second? Yes. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll give these folks a moment to. Um, Y'all don't want us to listen to the rest? Jeez. Yeah, we're expecting that each and every one of you are going to make an appearance through budget discussions that are going <laughs> forward too. Yeah, that's right. I should, I should shut up. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Not economic development. <laughs> <laughs> Here. Uh, they just vacate you can take us just like that. Just like Arnie, what looking under, under the Christmas tree? What just happened? Hey, where's that hot chocolates? 
Yeah, it's a box of chocolate. Yeah, it's a box of chocolate. Those truffle thingies that I gave you. I said, yeah, you gave them to me. They're gone. He goes, no, they're not gone. I said, yeah. I said, I took them to my office candy bowl. <laughs> we don't usually do friendly amendments, right? So that's kind of like, it was just confusing. There was too many amendments. Have a good night. Thank you. Jeez. <laughs> that just made me laugh when she just said that, though. I think we all deserve that chocolate. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Carol. Give it respect and no, no, consideration. No, 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 I told Marcy we could come by 740. Oh, oh, we'll be done. Sorry. That's why I took your water glass away. And that, I, know. <laughs> I don't know what happened to the glasses. What, what, what happened to Wilhelm and I? Wilhelm and I are not special enough to get cups. That's nice. I think the planner stole them. Yeah, I think <laughs> oh, okay, oh, both. <laughs> All right, council, we shall um, get back to the business of the day. Um, AVICC, AGM convention, um, and that sort of thing. So, <coughs> we have to plan ahead um, in here, and, and our lovely staff are anxious to make sure that we've got the right accommodations and, and things booked forward. So. The information is before you. AVICC convention this year is in Courtney. Um, it has been a sort of habit or tradition. Uh, we've had a couple members of council attend um, on most occasions. And so here we are. There is a recommendation before you. You're going to ask questions, comment. Councillor Martin. I have a question. And I guess I'm looking more to Councillor Day, and I guess you're the only person. Or have you gone? Mm -hmm. Is it worthwhile? Like honestly, like for a thousand dollars, it just—I I struggle with it just from a standpoint of thinking: mm, Do we really need to go every year? And uh, well, it greatly adds to the value of UBCM, which we've never questioned attending UBCM. Uh, one of the things that would be very nice to see is more people from the capital region um, on uh, AVICC as board members and participating in the actual nuts and bolts of making um, our resolutions uh, come to fruition. There have been a number of um, very important issues come out of AVICC, including uh, oil spill response, uh, issues including BC Ferry Fairs issues, which is um, the latest paper on the impacts, um, has had uh, a lot of airplay with local media. Um, and it's, it's where we have an opportunity to um, bring our items first that are going to UBCM to, as we're trying to lobby uh, the provincial government to. Uh, get things done. I've had a great deal of success bringing forward uh, issues around youth mental health, uh, for example. Uh, I've had, I believe, three resolutions now come forward through ABICC and on to UBCM. Um, haven't had all of my prayers answered, but um, at least they have, um, you know, my concerns and my issues have been raised, and they've been raised with the province uh, to the best of our ability. And I guess that's the best I can do. Uh, so I, I do think it's valuable. It's where um, the Tamuk Treaty Advisory Committee grew out of a session uh, with UBCM uh, in 2003 after um, the province kind of went behind our back and signed a memorandum of understanding uh, with um, uh, the Union of British Columbia Municipalities. Uh, without consulting local municipalities whatsoever. Um, they went straight to consulting UBCM. Um, and out of that uh, grew um, a need for us to be consulted and eventually the creation of the Treaty Advisory Committee itself so that our views could actually be directly um, brought forward rather than uh, represented uh, without our input. So. It, it is important, um, 
and I, I don't know that everybody needs to go, uh, but it is very helpful uh, to have um, more people go. It doesn't always have to be um, that much money if we're willing to carpool and perhaps even share accommodations. We can easily um, get more people uh, to these events at a lower cost if cost is, is the only issue. Um, that doesn't always work, but sometimes it can work. And just for instance, the you especially the Parksville training oh Parksville Council training session that's coming up yes. uh, Councillors Day and Trace and myself are all um, combining our accommodation there so it what did we have uh, about a six hundred dollar saving to the city Indeed. by by com combining so um, you know well, I'm not sleeping with Gordon Gordy's not going. No. <laughs> well, I'm not I'm sleeping with Jason. <laughs> <laughs> In any case, you know, it, it, there has to be a willingness to, you know, to do that and, and whatever. So I'm in past ABICC, Councillor Day and myself have attended. Um, and again, accommodation sharing has, and ride sharing and whatever has there was a benefit. time I couldn't get anyone yeah, to go exactly. to AVICC yeah, with yeah. me. In fact, Colwood did not used to belong to AVICC. Longest standing um, association uh, in, in the province, and Colwood wasn't a member for many years. Instead, we only belonged to UBCM. Um, it, it's been a good thing, um, and, and it gives us an opportunity to do a lot of work uh, without necessarily an agenda on the floor, especially it, it might provide some opportunities uh, where sewage treatment is involved in we terms of um, uh, that networking and the building of relationships outside of a specific agenda being on the table. Move the recommendation. <coughs> Further conversation, discussion? Uh, yes, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, the recommendation is what? What? Well, exactly. The recommendation was... Um, <laughs> two or three. Two or three. Let's well, do three. Does, does staff need to know who those two or three are? So we really should pick. We don't know. Who, we don't need to know who they are at this time, but we do need to know how many so that proper accommodations can be made. Okay. Uh, may, just before we move this motion, could we just confirm who could theoretically go? Because I can't. And and I would. All right. So we've know, got enough. I mean, I, I don't have to either. If we've got new people of interest, I think it's more important for them. To uh, do that, so. Okay. I I, c I potentially could go, but I'm not married to it either. I'm happy to send others. So the recommendation, uh, Your Worship, will include the number three. <laughs> well, I think we, if we leave it open, up to, up three. to three, maybe could we could we maybe <laughs> in this case we can do an up to. <laughs> um, it doesn't. Actually, it's not if we have to book the rooms so we need to know how many rooms are we booking well and i and i understand like so we could make the recommendations of up to three now who are they you got till the end of the week to supply the names to miss marcy i've already booked three rooms <laughs> yeah but i but need we to, have time I to, I need to we confirm on who's attending and if three ladies are attending perhaps you guys might want to combine yeah. and have one Tenth? room again Tenth, i don't know say? a little early Anyways, so we'll leave the recommendation as it is then. Uh, call the question, all those in favor? Opposed, motion carried. Can I say uh, after I find out if they snore or not? <laughs> um, bylaws, please, uh, 7.1, bylaw number 1562, first, second, and third readings. Colwood, Maine, Sewer, Local Area Service Bylaw Establishment and Loan Authorization uh, for 3111 Wood Park Drive. Move introduction. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Move second. Second, second. Uh, discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Uh, just a, a quick question. Um, this is for one property. Do we have to do these bylaws every time a single property joins? Can we not do them and like save them up till there's like six or something? 
Um, it seems like an awful lot of paperwork. An enlargement to the Usually people come forward when they're desperate to get a connection, otherwise they won't pay the money. And uh, if we save them up, then they just replace their septic fields instead. Okay, yeah. uh, anything else? Just one quick question. Um, how do you get the service to them when they're one? Uh, the developer of uh, Wood Park, Wood End Road, um, he built the sewer along Wood Park Drive. Oh, okay. Because yeah. we didn't let him take a shorter route. Okay. Call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, motion to move in camera. What, what? Oh, no, wait. One more. We got, sorry, sorry, ah. sorry, sorry. Ah. We got a third. No third. <laughs> Second, third. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Now we get to move in camera. Motion, please. <laughs> Motion to kick out planning. Second. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried.